Hello, hello, good evening, good evening, and welcome, everyone. Um, so, uh, here we are, once again, ready to get started with our, basically, the second last lesson for this week. Uh, I hope you guys are doing great, and that tonight we are, um, you know, going to be able to cover a few topics that I consider to be strictly relevant to the full understanding of uh, some, you know, English um, devices, if we can refer to them as that. Now, basically what we're going to do is that we're going to wrap up the topic related to, um, to the modifiers, and we're also going to be covering the reduced time classes. Now, reducing things in English, I think that, I mean, someone who has this bit of experience with the English language can tell you that reducing things in English is very common. It's one of the most common things you can do. And um, yeah, it is a, a, a very common practice. You can see it from verbs to, um, to possessives to basically anything, you know, acronyms, for example, acronyms are a very big thing in English. Um, so yeah, the, the fact that uh, they like to save time to make communication more agile is one of the things that can let you see how um, reducing, you know, the use of words or reducing um, a fraction of a sentence can make a huge change in, in, in English communication. So uh, tonight we're going to learn or uh, see more about how to reduce time classes and what time classes are some of the most commonly reduced. Uh, because yes, sometimes there are, you know, specific time classes uh, that can actually not be reduced and you will have to leave them there, you know, as, uh, as much as you may not like them, uh, you have to leave them there because, well, they are uh, unreducible time classes, mostly because of the way the sentences are structured around those time classes. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tricky topic. We're going to see more about it in just a while. But for now, well, this evening, I want to try something different. I don't want to ask you guys questions. I want you guys to ask questions to your classmates. I don't know if you have uh, thought about that ever, but that's what we're going to do tonight. Okay. So instead of me asking you any question that I can think of, it's going to be you asking your classmates any question that you can think of. Now, the only catch is that the question has to be uh, an open-ended question. So no yes, no questions. If you come across asking a yes, no question, please add the tag at the end of why, okay? So if you add any yes, no question, add a tag at the end and ask why. Um, so yeah, hablando de eso, I don't know if you guys know about tag questions do you know what tag questions are yes yes okay cool cool um so yeah when we refer to tag questions we basically mean you know uh it's a common phrase that we end with one word or a few words that um end with the intonation of a question and of course a question mark so that we make it a question now just so you know <laughs> Tag questions is a bad, a bad practice in Spanish. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, they are not well seen in Spanish. And in my case, I am so used to asking tag questions that, uh, yeah, sometimes my family gets mad at me because I assume things. I'm like, ya nos vamos, ¿verdad? And they're like, why don't you ask? Why are you saying that we're leaving? Like, we're not leaving. So ask before you say and I'm like, ah, yeah, I, I, I remember I'm speaking Spanish. I have to do it, you know, different. Like, um, ya nos vamos a ir or something like that. It's not the same. Yeah. But uh, you, so, you, you are aware, sometimes that questions can get you into trouble. But okay. Uh, so tonight, you guys are going to be asking each other or one another questions. So who would like to start? Who would like to be the first one on asking one of your classmates? Me, hey, teacher. Okay, Jenny, who are you asking and what question are you going to be asking that person? Uh, Sandra. Okay. Oh, Sandra, when does we finish this course? I don't remember. <laughs> well, as far as I know, maybe in uh, next Tuesday, the 28th of February. Mm -hmm. As far as I know. <laughs> yes. 
If I mean, if everything goes as planned, you know, if there is no cancellations and anything, we are supposed to be finishing on uh, next Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, February 28th. So yeah. Oh, but but this Friday 24th, uh, we are not going to start. No, it. unless tomorrow I'm not able to to be here, you know, because my electricity, internet, and anything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we hope that that doesn't happen. So oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Really yeah nice. Because we were about, we were this close from having to have a class on Friday because last night I was feeling very, very bad. I mean, I was really, really tired and I, I, I was not okay. I um, but I decided to go for it because I was like, nah, I don't want to have classes <laughs> on Friday because one of my cousins is coming. Basically my favorite cousin is coming on Friday and he wants it, uh, wants the family, you know, to go out to dinner. So I was like, I have to give her my best tonight. So I'm free on Friday. Um, but yeah, hopefully we're not going to be having classes on Friday. Hmm? May I say, may I say something uh, using the talk, the talk uh, question? That question? Sure. We won't have classes this Friday. Will I? Will we? Uh, will we? Will we? Will we? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's that's a, a way of asking tag questions or asking um, something with a tag at the end. So yeah, okay. you make um, or an, an assumption. You know, you make an assumption or present a statement, and then you add the tag at the end that is a question or turns the assumption into a question. So we will not have class this Friday, will we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, Sandra. So it's going to work like that. Now, it's your turn to ask a question to one classmate. Okay, let me, let me see. Um, Joaquin, uh, what, um, why, do you, the, why did you decide to study English uh, in English Corporate People? Okay, Joaquin, why did you decide to study English with Corporativo? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Um, well, let me see. I I decided um, to study English in in in, in English corporativo because I read um, in in the uh, internet the the program. Uh, in, in support of uh, patrocinated, I don't know. In sponsored, sponsored, sponsor, okay, sponsor. In in my case, uh, in my institution, uh, financial ministry, uh, in, in, I receive um, some in in. Between some invitation for participate in participate in in um, evaluation mm -hmm. for the level and 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 I passed the exam and I start in intermedio pre intermedio. Very good. Very good. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, that's a nice level. Pre-intermediate. Yeah, yeah, great. Very good. Okay, nice. Okay, Joaquin, now it's your turn. Who are you going to be asking? And what question are you going to ask this person? Oh, uh, let me see. Mm. In... <laughs> Jancy. Okay, what is yes. your question for Jansi? Yes. Yes. in your case, um, you are um, house, uh, you are working in your house, okay? Yes. What, what is the, what is more difficult um, in, in, in your, in your, and every day, Okay, so what is the hardest part of your everyday, Jancy? Yes. Um, is, is to be all the the order, mm. to be the order for all for my my kids, no kids, my my sons, oh, okay. my my husband, um, the and the cook and cook. Okay. 
eh, how do you say, tener todo al, a tiempo. How do okay. you say? To have everything on time. Okay, to mm -hmm. have everything on time. Yes. This is yeah. difficult for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Great. So that's the hardest thing of your everyday, having everything, you know, there and then. That's a way of saying it, there and then. Sí. En, en, eh, ahí y entonces. O sea, en el momento y la hora, ¿verdad? Perdón, el lugar y la hora. So there and then. Great. So having everything there and then. Uh, nice. So, Chansey, how about you? What will be your question and who are you going to ask this time around? Okay, Janet. Janera. Janet, Janet. Mm -hmm. Um, are you there, Janet? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the most difficult thing about studying English for you? Hmm. Uh, in my case, I think uh, the security to speak because sometimes I think uh, the words in my mind, but when I when I going to to speak, I forgot it. Yes. So uh, I think, oh, I can't say this or that thing, but when I'm going to say that, my money, my mind is is in black, is in, blank, in white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, this is you the tricky. Are, isn't sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so okay. it will be um something more like confidence, you know, having confidence. But yeah, it's a tricky thing because it happens to all, I think. And they say that, you know, bilingual minds are special because they can create or establish connections um, in the brain like faster to some extent. But at the same time, those connections in some people, me, for example, I'm one of those examples. Um, sometimes they get messed up, you know, all those strangled things in the brain sometimes get confused and the signals don't get to the uh, places they were supposed to. Um, but at the same time, it's like practice what's going to help you. And the fact that you start speaking more often probably will get you there. Uh, and another thing, this is my advice. Okay. My biggest advice is always going to be try to think in English because when you're thinking in English, your words are not going to be, you know, having that confusion, that uh, tiny second of translation that you have to do. The process, when it gets completely eliminated, it's way better. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that will be just an advice, a piece of advice there. Just try to think in English. And when you do that, you're going to be producing faster English. However, of course, uh, in the first few uh, months or weeks, you're going to feel weird because, I mean, you're going to be there, you know, your thoughts are going to be slow because you're trying to translate what you're thinking. But when you figure out a way the, to make it faster, it's going to be a nice payoff when you um, actually get to be more fluent, if that's what you want. But yeah, great. Good, good, good. Thank you, Janina, for, uh, for that. Now, who are you going to be asking, asking, sorry, and what question do you have for that person? um to walter okay so your questions for walter good morning um, walter Wal <laughs> walter um if you can to know a future and uh, a future if you can to learn another language what language will be it and why <clears throat> there are two possible languages I will to try to learn because I think it's uh, probably second or third language is French. Even though sometimes I try to search about that, that language because there are some call centers where do you try to work speaking French. Another language for me is Portugal, Portuguese. 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 I don't know. Um, I always dream about to know that country and try to communicate with the with the with the with the, the people East. in oh. Brazil. Okay. I don't know. It's interesting to, to me to try in the future uh, know that country. I don't know. I uh, sometimes. Uh, and dream to dance in Rio de Janeiro, 
Carnival. Carnival. Mm -hmm. Carnival. Yeah, Carnival. Nice. No, Carnival, yeah. no. For Carnival. <laughs> Carnival. Carnival. <laughs> sounds, sounds good. Uh, I don't exciting. know. I, exciting, yes. Yeah. yeah, I was I was about to ask you, uh, do you want to go to Portugal or do you want to go to Brazil? Because, I mean, I don't know too many things about Portugal. I don't know how, what attractions they may have. Yeah. I have only seen footage of uh, one of its bays. And in that bay, they say that they have one of the highest uh, waves when it comes to the ocean. You know, the, the waves where yeah. people surf them. Um, mm -hmm. So they say that in Portugal, there is, is one um, one bay that has... Y digo bay porque no es una playa, ¿sí? Es una, mm -hmm. básicamente es, es una, una orilla, ¿verdad? Es una bahía, no es una playa mm -hmm. porque no hay, eh, no tiene las características normales de una playa. But they say that they have the highest uh, waves there. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing that I know about Portugal. But I don't think Portugal is too attractive when it comes to tourism. So yeah. I was like, is he going to go to Portugal or to Brazil? Uh, but yeah, so now when you mentioned, when you mentioned Rio de Janeiro... Yeah, when you mentioned Rio de Janeiro, I get I confused like, when I say Portuguese for Portuguese. for Brazil. Yeah, same, <laughs> yeah. same. I have yeah, caught yeah. myself many times yeah, saying yeah. Brazilian. I want to learn Brazilian, <laughs> but it's not. It's yeah. Portuguese. Um, but one thing about it is that I don't know if you ever consume any um any media from from that country or from that language. Like, do you watch any movies or any any series in Portuguese? Have you ever tried it? Yeah, um, in my cable service, cable mm -hmm. service, there mm -hmm. are some channels about Bra Bra Brazilian. Mm. It sounds good. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I like to. I like to hear uh, uh, a girl to speak because mm -hmm. sounds so sexy. I don't know. <laughs> sexy. Yeah, no, sexy. I don't know. Sexy. 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 Yeah. Okay. Sexy. Care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Walter, Walter, was he parla Portuguese? And I try. <laughs> I now I only, only, only say, tudo bem. Tudo bem? No, uh, tudo bem. That's um, bueno, tudo bem. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but um, I think Portuguese is, is, is kind of, I mean, it will be kind of easy for us because it's basically the same grammar. It follows the same yeah. structure uh, yeah. in most cases. And most of the words are also pronounced in a similar manner. It's not like, yeah. you know, every single word is going to be the same, but it, it has like a similar manner. And mm -hmm. um, however, it's more rhythmic than Spanish. Spanish lacks that. Spanish is like more, more poetic and... Uh, Portuguese, they say it's more like like um, you know, like rhythmic in terms of in terms of being like like a song, like you're singing, not speaking. Mm -hmm. Same as Italian, you know, it follows the same pattern basically. Oh, oh. Um, Italian. Yeah, in my case, if you if you were to ask me, I think I have told you guys this before. My dream language to learn would be Italian. Now, Ooh, if it good. was if it was for work, I would like to learn um Cantonese or Chinese depending on how you want to refer to it because I think in the future it's going to be way more important than it is right now I don't know why but I just feel like you know I have that that thing that's telling me that probably Chinese is going to become more important than it is at the moment um but yeah there are so many languages in the world and you know getting to know languages is just great and i mean we who are trying to learn a second one in the case of sandra who is polish in them because she already has you know knowledge about uh, a few languages it's yes. it's very interesting and uh, also i think one of the most important things is that you start feeling more creative because that's also one of the things they say about bilinguals that people who are bilingual can also be more creative can have like better rhythm rhythms of thought and uh, have ideas that are more clever if we can call them that so oh, yeah yeah, yeah of okay walter your question and who are you going to be asking tonight okay um um julia patricia okay and what is your question for julia julia uh what do you think about a person practice frequently uh, procrastination. Do you think it's good or do you think it's bad? Why? 
Okay, so procrastination. Okay. What do you well, think? I think um, that procrastinate is bad. Yeah. But actually, uh, it helps you to. I don't know how to say this. To concentrate in the yeah. important things and in the less important things, <laughs> because when you have a lot of work to do, you yeah. have things that are important and things that are less important because yeah. all of the things that you have to do are important, right? So, mm -hmm. but when you take a time, but a little time to yeah. procrastinate, you have the time to think that what 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 is most important to do well i don't know yeah. but in my case that helps me a little bit because uh, i i have problems to sleep every night so i need a i need a little time to to concentrate and or to to uh, have my mind clean because uh, there are a lot of uh, thinkings in my mind when mm -hmm. I don't sleep well. So <laughs> I for me, it's not that bad, but if you can control it. Okay, so great. It's, 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 it's not, it's that not bad. about Salvadorian but, culture, teacher. Yeah, we are huge procrastinators. <laughs> that is yeah. actually one of the things that happens to us. I don't know. In my case, I'm one of those people who is a procrastinator, but at the same time, I think I'm blessed or lucky because yeah. many times I have caught myself going late to some things, being uh, not late, but because I, I almost never get late to things. OK, uh, but maybe rushing against time like I was supposed to be at places at 8 a.m. And I leave my house at 7.30 and I make it right before 8 a.m. For example, when I was still working at the university, it would be almost all the time. I was always going to be there three minutes, two minutes before. Um, I was always, when, while I was waiting for the bus, I was like, oh my God, I hope he, I hope he comes soon. I hope he comes soon. <laughs> because here they don't have established time. Because, um, you know, from or... Yeah, from my um, neighborhood, because it's basically my neighborhood, the one that is blessed with that, actually. From my neighborhood, I could take five different routes, five mm -hmm. different routes to go to my, um, to my, to my old job. And uh, sometimes, uh, while, while I was, you know, still walking towards the road where those buses go through, I will see two of them go by. Because it happens everywhere, I think, in the country that when whenever there is two more two or more routes of buses or micro buses, there's always going to be fighting. Um, so yeah, they will competing, you know, to to see who got more people before, uh, and it will happen to me that I will sometimes feel like ah oh, I'm gonna be late this time, but I didn't. I almost never got there late, um, mm -hmm. and probably that's what got me into you know assuming that. Uh, that I'm better when I'm against time because I feel I work better when I'm against time. So I'm one of those people who trusts uh, on being against time. I don't know if that's procrastination or only, you know, the fact that I'm a little bit crazy because for example, <laughs> these days that uh, I told you I was, I was, you know, helping my girlfriend with everything with the funeral. Most times, I mean, I was teaching from her, uh, from her house and she lives like what, five minutes away from her grandma. I will leave her grandma's house 15 minutes before eight and I will always arrive on time. Like, but I, one, there was one night when I was thinking what will happen if there was an accident? Because I mean, the street, you know, it's, it's like carretera litoral. So there is a lot of accidents very frequently. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what will happen if I will ever face the fact that there's an accident? Uh, what would I do? And luckily I didn't, you know, I, de I didn't have to face that situation. But yeah, sometimes it's bad to, to procrastinate like that. You know, don't have too much confidence in yourself. Just as, as Julia said, control it. You know, as, yeah. as far as you have control over it, you're going to be okay, I think. Okay, so Julia, you're going to be the last person on asking a, a classmate. Now, who is going to be the last person to answer tonight? And what is going to be your question? 
Okay. Um, Asdrubal. Okay. My Asdrubal. question is, uh, what is your... Uh, ideal yeah. work or job? Ideal job. What is your dream job? Mm -hmm. Okay, Honestly, Chua, what is your dream job? Honestly, let, but first let me tell you something. Actually, I really want to work as a teacher, but when I start the, my career as a, in the bachelor's degree in English, I hate the profession of teaching, but <laughs> with the time, uh, some teacher, uh, the way how they teach the, the language and how they uh, improve the, uh, develop the classes and all those things made me feel or made me decide that I want to work as a, a teacher. That's okay. the profession that I would like to develop but God will decide, yeah? Okay, so that's Marie Montoya, the one we're talking about most likely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he was and, my mentor. And you, and you mister. Oh, you thanks. Too, <laughs> thanks, appreciate it. But yeah, that Marie Montoya guy, he was my mentor. He was the one I copied many things from. He um, is relatively old because he's like, what? Like 39 years old now, but he looks so young. He looks even younger than me. And uh, well, he used to look younger than me because now he's getting a little bit shabbier. So now he's not, you know, that uh, young looking anymore. Uh, okay. He get married already. That's mm -hmm. the reason. <laughs> yeah. And also, yeah, he, he got married already. So probably that's also why he doesn't look young anymore. Uh, but the thing is that, yeah, that guy, he is great. And I will honestly understand where you're coming from with that, Chuba. Because, yeah, he is the inspiration for many of my generation <clears throat> and for many people in the university who start, you know, learning about English, but maybe not having the dream of working as, as an English teacher. Uh, yeah, but anyhow, he, he's a good role model. Yeah, yeah, honestly. Well, as a teacher. <laughs> as a yeah, teacher, because I met him as a friend and I know some things that, yeah. Anyway, uh, so last night we were pending on this. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Before we get to this, I was going to tell you that as soon as Julia started, started like, um, you know, arranging her, her question, I felt like she's going to ask that question. Because earlier today, with the first class that I had from one to two, I was asking them the question. And I asked them specifically that. I asked them what was their dream job or their most desired job. And... Um, it's great, actually, to see that many people don't think of just having a, you know, a regular position in a company. Most people are now thinking on, like, being their own boss, on having their own business. Uh, and that's also, you know, something very hopeful, I think, for our country. Because we're not just thinking on working for someone, but we are thinking on working for us. And, um, yeah, I always think, I have thought that that is some, um, something very, very good about you know our people who are always pushing forward and trying to um to improve and to become better but so last night we were talking about order of modifiers uh, we decided or uh describe how determiners are the first thing you have to add and determiners are also what we know as articles in english um of course uh, we refer to them more as determiners because here we have the ones that are actually called determiners. Examples, these, that, these, and those. Then after that, you add an opinion. An opinion is basically what you think about something, uh, mostly about the looks or about um, what, how the quality of it would be. Then you will have to add the size then you will have to add the age, how old, how young, how new, how um, ancient it may be. Then the shape, if it's square, round, flat, rectangular, um, what else? Cylindrical, anything like that. Then the color. The color is also very important. And as an adjective, it helps you identify one thing or you know establish the difference between one thing and another. So a color is of course a very important point in order um, you know, to describe uh, an object properly. 
then we have the origin. When we describe the origin, we are going to say or refer to as where is this coming from? Like mostly that's how, what we're going to do. Describe where is it coming from? So if it's like, for example, something that um, came from a, from a different country, came from a different place, um, something that also has a tag or a name that, you know, you can mention. For example, here we have French, American, and Greek. Those are like what we know as nationalities, but at the same time can be used to describe things, you know, and, and where they came from. So that's origin. Then we have material. Material is everything, or basically it's an adjective. As an adjective, it describes what something is made of. For example, wood, metal, cotton, and paper. So those will be some examples that you have for material. Um, last night, we were talking about a car, if I remember. So it was the... Um, se me olvidó cuál era el ejemplo, honestly. Solo recuerdo que era uh, big... Uh, old round blue car. That's the only thing I remember. But then I don't remember what else we we had. I mean, the the the, the opinion is the one that I don't remember. Anyway, uh, so if we continue with that example, we may say, for example, that it's a metal, you know, a metal made car. Uh, then we have the purpose. When we talk about a purpose, is an adjective that describes what something is used for. These adjectives are often ending with ing. Examples, sleeping, uh, as in a sleeping bag, roasting, as in, as in roasting tin. Uh, so here, for example, it's very common that you hear uh, when we have these purpose adjectives, purpose adjectives are the ones that are not going to be joined by no other adjective. It's very common that the only adjective they're joined to or modifier that they are uh, adjoined to is going to be the color, okay? Color or uh, shape, but it's very weird that these adjectives are going to be adjoined to more adjectives. And then the noun, well, the noun, as I said yesterday, the noun is basically the figure that we are referring to. So let's say that I want to discuss or explain how a house looks. So if I was to, to describe a house, and as I said yesterday, um, the top that you could or should include in terms of modifiers is going to be four. Because if you add more than four modifiers, I think the question or I mean the, the, the sentence will become too redundant and you will have too many, um, too many adjectives describing one single thing. So if I was to describe a house, I would say um, the big, square blue house that's what i will do okay so that's for a house if i was to describe uh, a garden it will be um what the beautiful uh round wooden garden okay so the beautiful round wooden garden and uh, if i was to describe uh, what a uh, shirt i will say uh the tiny red American shirt, okay? The tiny red American shirt. Um, Cause if, for example, I was to say the tiny red American cotton shirt, okay? Cause it's, it's made of, out of cotton, it will be a specific, yes. But the cotton section of it, I think it will be a little bit too much. What you have to do guys, and, and in order for you to remember this or in order for you to understand the reason why, we don't add as many adjectives, is that, for example, if you don't add all the adjectives at once, uh, at once, sorry, you give the opportunity for the person, the one you're providing this description to, to see through the possible options they have. And then maybe they can ask you, like, is it made out of cotton? Because if not, what you're going to do is also that you're going to sound a little bit bossy. I don't know if you like to sound bossy, but being bossy is also something that can sometimes be seen as being rude. Therefore, it is better that you keep it, you know, simple, not too complicated. Because if you go all the way and explain completely how something looks, that can make you sound a little bit rude. And when we're having a conversation, it is not ideal to sound rude. Um, okay, so we have... Yes, Amilcar. 
Uh, okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. In material, <laughs> I have known that that uh, that something is is made made of or made from. Uh, made. Cuando decimos el of es made out of. Made out of. Okay. Sí. Made out of. Made out of. O sea, la idea es que como se usa la linking sound, por eso suena mucho más rápido. Sí, okay, pero okay. se dice made out of, made out, made of. out of, made sí, out of. es hecho de, sí, made okay. out of. Um, okay. If we say made from, no sería tal vez tan apropiado. Usualmente si podríamos decir el from, sería tal vez como taken from, sí, taken mm. from. Pero el made from, <coughs> not really, sino que es más común decir made out of, made out of, hecho de. Mm -hmm. Um, because okay. yeah, we can say made from, for example, if we uh, have a paper bag and it's made from recycled paper, probably then, probably then you could oh. use it. Yeah, but it's not that common. The most common way of describing things or in terms of the material, it's made out of, made out of. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. All right. So, uh, so you guys, please try to remember this order, okay? Because as I was saying yesterday, if for example, I was to say the blue, old, beautiful wooden house, that would make sense in the end, probably. Yes, it would make sense, but it would not be ideal. It will not be the best sentence you can create because the best way to do it, it will be, Uh, the beautiful blue uh, metal house. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. The beautiful, the beautiful uh, big, I think it was big, metal house. So that will be a way of, you know, ordering um, the, the modifiers so that they make full sense. But if you start scrambling them and just adding the modifier whenever you feel like it should go, it will make a whole mess. And also, if you ever decide to go for Spanish grammar and try to add modifiers in, in the Spanish order, they will also sound very weird because they will be completely different. As in Spanish, we have a, a different order. But in English, this is the one you should follow. So first, the determiner. This one is going to establish whether something is, um, is a singular or a plural noun. That is basically the start point for it. Uh, it's not necessary, though. It's not uh, a necessity. If you are going to um, to mention a noun, it's not like obligatory that every single time you have to add a determiner. However, it is probably one of the most common things to add. Uh, then you add the opinion. It's basically what you think of the thing. The size, it's very obvious how big or small it is. The age, how old or, or, or young or new it is. Then the shape, well, it comes in, in different um, ways. So the shape can be basically anything that you guys can mention in terms of how something can be shaped. Um, color, of course, you know what it is, right? Because color can be just any color that you can mention or recognize from the thing. The origin is that uh, is used when something comes from another place, from another thing, uh, or... It's mostly about location. Okay, so when we talk about origin, it's mostly about location. Material, what the thing that you are going to mention is made out of, and then the purpose. Like if it's used for something, then you're going to have to use the purpose. However, as we said previously, the purpose is always going to come with an ING form. So for example, if I ask for um, what? a uh, big cleaning towel okay so i'm going to use the towel to clean if you hand me a regular towel and then i clean with it it was your mistake because when i asked for the towel i i said that i wanted a cleaning towel so that's the purpose you know i, I have an idea of what i'm going to be using the towel for um if we say for example i need the the purple what jumping rope the purple jumping rope. So I know that that rope is going to be used for me to jump over, you know? So the jumping rope will be something that it has a specific purpose. Therefore, 
I mentioned the purpose when I asked for the rope. Because if I only ask for a purple rope, uh, maybe you can hand me one that will be hard for me to use as a jumping rope if I had the desire to use it for said, um, for said ideal. So uh, purpose is probably one of the trickiest one trickiest ones as it's the one that goes right before the noun. And that is probably one of the things that you have to remember every single time, that the purpose has to go right before the noun. That makes it sound as if it is a compound noun, porque también existen, así como existen, ¿verdad? Los phrasal verbs existen los compound nouns, pero no necesariamente, ¿ok? No son compound nouns, no nos vamos a entender como compound nouns, sino que van a ser, a ver, en algunas clases de gramática sí se mencionan como compound nouns, ¿ok? Sí hay eh, momentos o quizás ha habido clases en las cuales se les conoce o reconoce como compound nouns. Compound nouns se refieren, por ejemplo, cuando yo digo esto, el sleeping bag, el roasting tin, uh, lo que mencioné antes del, del jumping rope. Esos, algunas personas los reconocen como compound nouns porque son básicamente inalienables el uno del otro. O sea, tienen que, te, yo tengo que decir que es una jumping rope la que yo necesito para que alguien me pase un salta cuerdas. Pero eh, el detalle es que también se puede entender como si el jumping, la parte del jumping, es un adjetivo, porque lo que estoy haciendo es describir cuál es el propósito de eso que yo necesito. O sea, yo necesito un rope, sí, es cierto, pero necesito uno que me sirva para poder saltar. Entonces, por eso más funcionaría como un adjetivo. Ahora, como les digo, en algunas clases de gramática, estos se van a conocer como compound nouns. ¿Por qué? Porque si ustedes simplemente preguntan o piden una rope, o, o si piden una bag, el ejemplo más claro podría ser ese, ¿verdad? Si piden una bag, alguien les va a pasar una bolsita de, de, de plástico o una de papel. Entonces, y ahí está su bolsa. Pero... It's a compound nouns is a combination to word to meaning one thing. One thing. Uh -huh. Compound okay. nouns son eso. Sí, son dos okay, palabras okay, que no se pueden separar porque si se separan, por ejemplo, if I only ask for a bag, so that's what I'm going to get, a bag. Yeah. But if I ask for a sleeping bag, So you're going to know that I need a bag for me to sleep in, you know, something that I can probably <clears throat> inflate and then sleep in the thing or something that's going to keep me cozy and, and, and uh, kind of, I don't know, warm. So that is what uh, compound nouns are. However, compound nouns derive <laughs> from the idea that these things have a purpose. So it will be a purpose modifier. So an adjective before the noun. Entonces, o sea, si lo hubiéramos desglosado completamente, es un adjetivo, un adjetivo de propósito. Pero si lo vemos desde el punto de vista general de la gramática general, es un nombre compuesto, ¿sí? O sea, es, un, es, es básicamente algo que ya ese nombre, esas dos palabras, se, tienen un objetivo específico y para eso es que las vamos a utilizar. Pero bueno, vamos a pasar ahora a otra tabla. Esta otra nos muestra más o menos ejemplos de cómo podríamos nosotros ordenar, ¿verdad? Eh, algunas, algunas oraciones. So here, for example, we have silly. Okay. So, silly. Sorry. So, uh, silly young uh, English teacher. That will be me. <laughs> so, silly young What? English teacher. Uh, or, if we had, for example, a uh, huge old metal ball. Ok, huge old metal ball, ¿sí? Sería un ball grandote, ¿verdad? O el gigante de metal. Uh, if I said a small round, uh, what? American, a small round American road, porque no aquí ninguna de esas opciones funciona. Road, so a small round American road, sí, sería una... Carretera redonda en Estados Unidos. Una pequeña carretera que sea redonda en Estados Unidos. So that would be a small round American road. Entonces, en ese orden, ¿verdad? Siguiendo este orden, es en el cual vamos nosotros a construir eh, nuestras oraciones. O cuando tengamos sure. diferentes modifiers, siguiendo este orden será que las deberemos construir. ¿Sí, Walter? Uh, question. Uh, when you structure a sentence using some modifier, Is necessary to separate by commas or no? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no never. No, modifiers okay. do not go separated. No, no, okay. you have to do, do it like if it's, uh, you know, because it's all part of the same description. 
Ah, it's okay. all part of the same description. So it's not a list you're making about how it looks. It's a description. So it's, ah, okay. it has to be all together. Mm -hmm. So no commas okay. needed in this case. No. Okay. Um, so now. In Spanish, in Spanish, when you describe yeah. something, uh, something you need to put comma, comma, comma. But yeah. in English, no. Yeah, it's so weird. No. There's no need. Okay. No, there's no need to add to add commas. For example, here we have some examples. You see, handsome young man. Okay, so there's no commas here. Handsome young man. And uh, that is, uh, this one is, for example, a modifier of opinion. And this one is a modifier of age. Here we have a big black car. So it's a modifier of size and nice. a modifier of color. Then we have the... Yes, but it's but it's weird to see some sentences using all complete uh, uh, modifiers. It basically doesn't happen. Generally, As I said, generally, I think it's two, two, one, three. That tops, tops, yeah, four. Yeah. That's the top, yeah. you know, yeah. because as I said, as I have been trying to say, uh, if you use more than that, it's too redundant. And also you yeah. sound a little bit rude or bossy because you sound like you're yeah. uh, telling this person like you will not understand if I don't explain it this clearly um so yeah that's why we don't really see you know the use of many of them uh for example here we can say ugly big car big black car yes an ugly big black big black car it is possible it is something that you will see uh and as you see you know the computer doesn't need to add any commas because you can add as many modifiers as you need uh as far as they are modifiers so an sure. ugly big black car is the, the specific description of a car that doesn't look that good and it's black. <laughs> it is very big also. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Teacher, a question. Yes. Bless if, you. if I uh, talk with someone in English, mm -hmm. I heard so weird when I say a um, big ugly black car. Mm -hmm. Identify my mistake or no? Yes. Big ugly. Mm -hmm. Uh, they okay. would, they would, because the order in which they will say it is ugly big black car. Okay. Yeah, they would. And however, depending on, on how educated the person is, because if you're speaking yeah. to a, someone, you know, from, from like outside of town and, and someone who probably lives in a farm or something like that, maybe then they wouldn't. Because if you, if you listen to people from Texas or some regions of Texas, some regions of Iowa, uh, they don't follow this order, but I think mm -hmm. I think that that modifier to apply when you are speaking Spanish. But when when I am speaking Spanish, I don't remember that order. We don't. We don't pay attention to it in Spanish. <laughs> we just don't pay attention to it. Pero por ejemplo, si yo les dijera el uh, que el carro negro feo aquel, sí. Mm -hmm. O sea, dije primero el carro, después dije negro. <laughs> Después dije feo. Oh, perdón, lo del grande no lo mencioné. Sí, pero um, aquel carro grandote, feo, negro. Entonces, en, o sea, en español casi como que es scramble. Pero porque igual, lo mismo, ¿verdad? No tenemos esa costumbre de estar prestando atención a eso. Y además Exacto. es raro que alguien utilice más de dos adjetivos sí. para describir algo. O sea, es el carro grandote feo o el carro grandote negro. Sí. In, Pero Spanish, el carro... we don't have. in Spanish, we don't have rule, rule yeah. for no. this, for, no. for modifiers, in... for adjectives, yes. o sea, para los adjetivos for en sí. And mm -hmm. now I understand the English because yeah. for me, eh, the blue shoes, I don't know, the, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, or when, when you see, uh, for example, the big blue shoes, ¿sí? O sea, ¿por qué dicen big blue shoes? Y por eso les dije, o sea, que este tema, ayer les decía que este tema a mí se me hace interesante por eso, porque es quizás una de las cosas que más aquejamos, y digo aquejamos yeah. porque a todos nos pasa que decimos, ¿y por qué el inglés es tan enredado? O sea, ¿por qué, por qué están al revés? Pero es porque nosotros no estamos acostumbrados al orden, y es como estos adjetivos son... Quizás la, el sazón, ¿verdad?, del idioma es básicamente lo que utilizamos todos los días para que se nos entienda de qué estamos hablando cuando estamos describiendo algo. Entonces, quizás ahí es donde reside, ¿verdad?, el hecho de que nos quedamos como de... No se entiende, pero es porque no conocemos a veces la regla de cómo van ordenadas algunas cosas. So here, for example, once again, you see, this is the most common thing. 
O sea, los más comunes son opinion in color or uh, opinion in age. Those are the most common ones. Because here, for example, it's opinion. In, well, this one is opinion in size. That horrible big dog. Okay, so this is um, opinion in size. Now, uh, if we add color here, where will it go? ¿Dónde iría el color si agregáramos un color acá? After the horrible. After horrible? No, after big. After big. Okay, after let's try. Let, no, let's try after. after big. Horrible after black, big. black big yeah. dog. After shape, yes. It's after shape. So, in the, uh, no, in this case, it will be after size. After size. Because nice. big will not necessarily be, uh, see, here, big is uh, size. Nice. So, yeah, after size, we will have to add the color. So it will be big horrible, dog. big, black it's dog. necessary yes. to learn that structure. The order? Yeah, the mm -hmm. order. Opinion, size, age, yeah. shape, color, origin, material, Not purpose. Uh, someone say, uh, someone told me, hey, when you need to remember that, remember that, that the next word. <laughs> Osas mm -hmm. come. Yes, mm -hmm. that's come. Osas come, yeah. yes. Oh yeah, what's that come? So the easiest one, the easiest one, sorry, the easiest one to remember is purpose. In my opinion, at least the easiest one is purpose because it's always right before the noun. So it that's oh, yeah. the, the easiest one. Uh May yes. I say something? Mm -hmm. Tell me. Yeah. I've got a white washing machine. Machine at, at Okay. Home. I have yeah, who's a bail ejemplo here? I have <laughs> I have. A white, a white washing, washing machine. machine. Mm -hmm. So here we have two different ones. Y aquí está uno, miren, este es otro. Es que por eso les digo, siempre los que son así de purpose suenan como si, fueren, si fuesen compound nouns. O sea, son, en teoría, son compound nouns. Pero como ahorita estamos estudiando los modifiers, por eso no les puedo decir sí directamente, ¿verdad? Son compound nouns. Pero eh, esto del washing... Es el purpose, ¿sí? Es el para qué vamos a utilizar esa máquina. Esa máquina la vamos a usar para lavar, o sea, la lavadora, ¿verdad? Pero yes. como aquí estamos diciendo, uh, el, el purpose, it's that it's going to be washing. Therefore, we have to say washing machine. Sorry. Uh, then, here, for example, I was trying to add a purpose to this. Those horrible yellow um, hanging curtains. Hanging curtains. So you use those curtains for them to be hanging. So they are going to be hanging. Therefore, the purpose comes right before uh, the noun. So I think the ones that are easier to remember where you're going to place them are going to be those. You know, the first one is uh, the, the what? The determiner. The yeah, the determiner is going to be the easiest one. And then um, the one that you need for purpose. Because in my case, it took me a long while to remember that the first one, in terms of uh, order, it was going to be opinion. You know, opinion was one of the hardest ones for me to remember. I will add my opinion right in the middle. And I was like, it doesn't sound right. And then the teacher will tell me, no, it's not right. Because you have to mention the opinion first. And then you will have to mention this, the size. And then you will have to mention the age. And then the shape. Then the color. Then the origin. And then the oh material in for last, <laughs> you will have teacher. to add the purpose. Yes. Teacher, mm -hmm. I want to say, uh, with my daughter, mm -hmm. we we made a song so as not to forget the order. Oh, that's in great. Person. Yes. How, how does it go? How does the song go? Oh, I, I really... <laughs> uh, why you yes. mention it then? <laughs> why you mention yes. it then? You need to make a, the, 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 the fork with the, the hands uh -huh. and you don't forget, yes. Oh, but, that's yeah. good. Yes. That's like good. the tablas of multiplicar. Yes, uh -huh. like the kindergarten, yes. It's okay, it's okay. I mean, mm -hmm. whatever works, you know, whatever works for us, for us to remember and to learn, it is possible. So, nice. Ahora. Let's see, can we get a few examples? Because I think we're not going to have time to go into any other topics. So a few examples related to modifiers. How can you guys generate sentences that include... Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a challenge. I want you to, to think of sentences that include three modifiers. Okay, so three modifiers. Um, think about those 
And please provide me some examples that you can think of. Um, who would like to start? Okay. Okay, Please, Luis, go ahead. I have a big black boot. Okay, I have a, I have big, a big black black boot. Boot. Boot, no, boot. Book. Oh. B U L L. Okay. No, boot. Bo. Uh, toro. Oh, bull. B U L L. Okay, B -U -L -L. big black boot. <laughs> okay, but here we have a problem. We're all okay. including two. Mm -hmm. We only including two. So here we may say, for example, I think this is a, the proper word. Let me see if it's the proper word. I think it's breeding. I think it is breeding. Um, because those are things that I don't necessarily know. Breeding. Yes. Big black breeding bull. Breeding. Okay. Breeding bull. Es un, un, un toro, ¿cómo se dice? El, el rejero. Sí, rejero. Ajá. Yes. No, en este caso, al el, utilizar el, 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 el breeding, sería básicamente el rejero. O sea, el toro que utilizamos para eso, ¿va? Para, yeah. ajá, para generar más, más, para más, generar toritos, más, más toritos. Yeah. So I have a big black breeding bull. Sí. Yeah. So it's, it's big. Yeah, we have a size. It's black. And it's we have, the color. We have a color. And we have breeding, which is the purpose. So that's what we use the bull to. El rasero sería casi lo mismo, sí, uh -huh. en, en, en cierta medida, pero normalmente creo yo, según lo que yo recuerdo de cuando teníamos ganado, cuando hablamos de rasero es cuando tratamos que sea, o sea, de, o sea, esa raza específica, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. En cambio, el breeding es como que es el que tenemos ya en la casa y, ajá. El oficial. Acá. Ajá, el oficial, ajá, el oficial. Entonces, el rasero <ríe> sería uno que, 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 digamos, es un tipo especial que algún vecino, algún amigo tiene y nos lo presta solo para... Que le haga el favor ah. alguna vez a la, a la vaca. Yeah, like yeah. the roosters. Mm -hmm. Kind of, like... sort of. <laughs> Kind of, sort of. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, Walter. Um, a beautiful, a small, Ay. rectangular. Ay. <laughs> small, rectangular, uh -huh. brown. Salvadorian Dude. leather. <laughs> oh. Putting away wallet. Salvadorian leather putting away wallet. <laughs> okay, so you went for it. <laughs> <laughs> so you went for it. So it's a beautiful small rectangular brown Salvadorian leather putting away wallet. 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 Okay, a beautiful small rectangular brown Salvadorian leather. Putting away wallet. Muy bien. Ahora, dígalo en español. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Vea. <Yeah. laughs> Sería una hermosa... ¿Qué? Una hermosa cartera. Pequeña. Sí, pequeña, hecha de, hecha de cuero, cuero salvadoreño. salvadoreño. No, una no. cartera Ca de guardar. Sí, cartera de guardar pequeña. <laughs> Hecha de cuero salvadoreño, para que vean okay. el desorden que se hace en español. Sí, en, español, like es un, en español es un en español es un solo desorden. O sea, es una cartera que una cartera de guardar, una hermosa cartera de guardar rectangular pequeña hecha de, uh, de cuero de salvadoreño. salvadoreño. Uh -huh. You see, that's a tricky one. Ok, gracias Walter por, por el poema de la noche. Uh, anyone else? Se venden carteras para, para señoritas. Se venden bueno. carteras para guardar pequeñas rectangulares hechas de cuero salvadoreño. Ok, please. Produce okay. Walter. Uh -huh. Tell me, Daniel. Walter. Yesterday we bought a spectacular, a spectacular black fishing rod. Okay, we bought an ex. Uh, oh, it will be a uh, spectacular black fishing rod. Black fishing rod. Uh, okay, great. So yesterday we bought a, a, a spectacular black fishing rod. It's good because here we have opinion, color, and purpose. Opinion, color, and purpose. Great. So before we go, one more. I just want one more before we go. 
una más antes de irnos. A ver quién piensa de una, una oración más. Que incluya tres, no se van a poner como Walter. <risa> Inspiration teacher. <risa> no, pero sí, se, se, como diría el profe de filosofía de la UES, <risa> la compró verde, compadre. Sí. <risa> 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 Mucho filosofía. Ok. My little, my little, ba, my little, my little black computer. My little black computer. Okay, so we only have two little two. black. Mm -hmm. Ahora vamos a ver si le ponemos computing, <laughs> computing computer. Ahí sí. Sí, porque el, el uso es para que compute, ¿verdad? So, little black computing computer. Sí, computing yeah. computer. There you go. So, uh, tricky, I know, but at the same time, it clarifies the way we see English. It also helps us understand it a little bit better. Um, so, ya les di algo del inglés, ahora les debo uno acerca de mujeres. No, just kidding. <laughs> ya entienden ya entiende el inglés un poquito mejor, ahora vamos a ver si podemos entenderlas a ellas un poco mejor. Uh. <laughs> okay, so guys, uh, that's it for today. Thank you, thank you very much for uh, your attention and the active participation you guys have had. Tomorrow we're going to continue talking. Let me see what was the topic. Uh, it's going to be about, yeah, re reduced time classes. That is also something that um, is going to be pretty interesting. So tune in for that. See you tomorrow. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. And take care. Bye, bye. See you tomorrow. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye.